Hi there students and welcome to Crazy Nurse RN channel. I'm Chris Elmer Ducanes, nurse educator teaching fundamentals of nursing practice. If you have any question or if you want to clarify some gray areas with regard to our topic today, please comment down below. I'll be glad to read your comments and answer your questions. Also, if you want to suggest any topic or content for our next videos, please write them below. And if you find this YouTube channel useful, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for new video uploads. Please do not forget to check the description box below for additional inputs and some clarification with regard to this lecture video. So today, our topic is about the nursing process. So what is nursing process? It is a systematic, rational, method of planning and in providing individualized nursing care. So that means nurses use nursing process in the care of their clients or their patient. We also have purpose of nursing process. First, it is to identify a client's health status and actual or potential health care problems or needs. Second, Establish plans to meet the identified needs of the patient. Lastly, it is to deliver specific nursing interventions to meet the identified needs of the client. Our clients can be an individual, a family, a community, and a group of people. Okay, so take note of these, uh, of these following clients, okay? We also have characteristics of the nursing process. First, it is cyclic and dynamic in nature. Second, it is client-centered. Third, it focuses on problem-solving and decision-making. Fourth, interpersonal and collaborative style. Fifth, we have your universal applicability. And sixth, use of critical thinking. And lastly, there is a clinical reasoning. Okay? So these are the seven characteristics of the nursing process. So we have five phases of the nursing process. So we have a pneumonic. Add pi. Okay. So A stands for assessing. D stands for diagnosing. P stands for planning. I stands for implementing. And 5 stands for evaluating. Okay. So these are your five phases of the nursing process. Your add pi. Okay. So now let's go to your first phase of the nursing process. It is your assessing. Okay. What is assessing? It is the systematic and continuous collection, organization, validation, documentation of data or information. Okay. So I want you to remember that in your assessment phase, which is the first phase of your nursing process, it involves four stages. So we have your collection, we have the organization, we have the validation, and we and lastly, your documentation. Okay. Also, it is a continuous process carried out during all phases of the nursing process. That means that in every phase of your nursing process, assessment is involved. Okay. For example, in your implementation phase or implementing phase, before you implement a particular nursing intervention, you have to reassess the patient first, okay? So that is why it is a continuous process. You assess in every step or in every phase of your nursing process. Also, to establish a database about the client's response to health concerns or illness and the ability to manage healthcare needs. So, we have types of assessment. First, we have your initial assessment. 
it is performed within the specified time after admission to healthcare agency. We also have your problem-focused assessment. It is an ongoing process integrated with nursing care. Also, we have your emergency assessment. It is done during any physiological or psychological crisis of the client. And lastly, we have your time-lapsed reassessment. It is done several months after initial assessment. Okay? Your time-lapse reassessment happens, for example, a doctor or a nurse prescribed a particular uh, treatment or intervention to the patient. So that intervention must be evaluated several months after that initial assessment okay, or initial implementation of a particular intervention. So that is your time-lapse reassessment. You assessed again several months in order to determine if the treatment or the intervention is effective. We also have your data collection, which is the first stage of your assessment phase. Okay, You collect data. So it is the process of gathering information about a client's health status must be both systematic and continuous to prevent omission of significant data and reflect a client's changing health status. Okay? So that means when you collect data, it should follow a step-by-step -step procedure. And also, it should be continuous data gathering or data collection. That means, it is, it, that means uh, gathering of data should not be uh, collected in one time only. Okay, it should be collected. Uh, it should be collected from time to time. Okay, the reason for that is to prevent omission of significant data or information. Okay. We also have your database. Okay, database contains all the information about a client. It includes your nursing health history, physical assessment, primary care provider's history and physical assessment, results of laboratory and diagnostic tests, material contributed by other health personnel. Okay, so these are this, the sources of your database. Okay. We also have your types of data. First, we have your subjective data. It referred as symptoms or covert data, apparently only to the person affected and can be described or verified only by that person. Okay? That means this data must be collected from the person who is experiencing the symptoms. Okay? You ask the patient, how how does it feel, okay? For example, if you want to elicit or if you want to collect the intensity of pain, so you have to ask the patient, okay? That is a subjective data. When we say objective data, it referred as signs or overt data. Detectable by an observer or can be measured or tested against an acceptable standards. So this means that when we say objective data, the nurse can directly observe the patient, okay? So, it can be seen by the nurse, okay? The assessment findings can be noted by the nurse who observes the particular signs, okay, from the patient. We also have sources of data. First, we have your primary source, which is the client herself or himself. And it is the best source of data. We also have your secondary or indirect source. Okay? It comes from support people like your family, friends. Okay? We also have your client's records, healthcare professionals, and literature. Okay? So these are 
sources considered as secondary or indirect source of data. Now, let's proceed to the data collection methods. So data can be collected through observing, interviewing, and examining. When we say observing, it is to gather data using the census. So it is a conscious, deliberate skill that is developed through effort and with an organized approach. So we have two aspects in your observation technique. Noticing the data and selecting, organizing, and interpreting the data. Okay, So meaning to say, when we use the method of observation or observing, we use our five senses. Okay, We use our senses to collect data. We also have your interviewing. It is a planned communication or a conversation with a purpose. So we have focused interview. The nurse asks the client specific questions to collect information related to client's problem. Okay, that is your focused interview. We also have two approaches to interviewing. First, we have your directive interview and your non-directive interview. When we say directive interview, it is highly structured and elicits specific information. On the other hand, when we say non-directive interview, it is known as rapport building interview. It allows the client to control the purpose, subject matter, and pacing. So we have here rapport. What is rapport? It is, under, it is an understanding between two or more people. Okay, this happens when the nurse is comfortable talking to the patient and vice versa okay so that is your rapport you establish rapport okay we also have types of interview questions we have closed questions and open-ended questions for your closed questions it is used in the directive interview so it is restrictive and generally require only yes or no or short factual answers that provide specific information. However, when we say open-ended questions, it is associated with a non-directive interview. It invites clients to discover and explore, elaborate, clarify, and illustrate their thoughts or feelings. Okay. We also have neutral questions. And leading questions. When we say neutral questions, it is a question that client can answer without direction or pressure from the nurse. It is open-ended and it is used in non-directive interviews. When we say leading questions, on the other hand, it is usually closed, used in a directive interview, and thus directs the client's answer. Okay? Now let's proceed to the stages of an interview. So first, we have the opening, okay? It is the most important part of the interview. It is to establish rapport and orient the interviewee. Next, we have the body, okay? Client communicates what he thinks, feels, knows, and perceives in response to questions from the nurse, okay? And lastly, we have the closing. Nurse terminates the interview when the needed information has been obtained. It is important for maintaining rapport and trust and for facilitating future interactions. Okay? So remember, when you conduct an interview with your patient, you have to follow these stages. So we have the opening, then the body, and last, we have the closing. Okay? Next, we have examining, which is one of the methods of data collection. So first, we have your physical examination or your physical assessment. So it is a systematic data collection method that uses observation to detect health problems. 
So we have the following techniques. So we use inspection, auscultation, palpation, and your percussion. Okay, so these are the four techniques under your physical assessment or physical examination. Phys physical examination approaches. So we have two types. First, we have the head-to-toe approach. It is medically termed as cephalocaudal. Okay? So it begins at the, at the head, progresses to the neck, thorax, abdomen, and ends at the toes. So it follows the anatomical structure of your body, starting from the head. Okay? We also have your body systems approach. Okay? It is called as your 13 functional areas. It investigates each system individually. Okay? So for example, if you want to assess for the respiratory system, so you have to assess the lungs, you have to assess the breath sounds, the respiratory rate. Okay? So anything that involves the respiratory functions, so you have to assess that one. Okay? That is your 13th functional area. Okay, that is how you classify or that is how the approach of your body system or 13th functional area. We also have your screening examination. It is also called as review of systems. Brief review of essential functioning of various body parts or system. Okay, so that is your screening examination. It is just a quick or brief review of important body parts or systems that you need to assess. Next, after collecting the data, we have to organize the data. Okay, so this is the second steps or second stage under your assessment phase. So the nurse uses a written or electronic format that organizes the assessment systematically. So your collected data can be organized through these following models. Okay, so we could have the body system models. We could use that one as your basis in organizing your data. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, developmental theories, wellness models, Gordon's functional health patterns framework, RM's self-care model, and Roy's adaptation model. So these are the ways that you can organize your data. Next, after organizing the data, we need to validate the data or validating data. Validation means it is the act of double-checking or verifying data to confirm that it is accurate and factual. Okay? So what is cues? What are cues? Sorry. What are cues? These are subjective or objective data that can be directly observed by the nurse. What is in uh, inferences or inference? These are the nurse's interpretation or conclusion made based on the cues. Okay, so once you have collected the data, so it's time for you to conclude or to interpret those data. So that is your inference. Okay. Lastly, after validating your data, we now document your data so it is an accurate accurate documentation is essential and should include all data collected about the client's health status okay data are recorded in a factual manner and not interpreted by the nurse so it is very important that when you document your data it should be accurate okay and it should include all data essential to the patient's health status okay and it should be in a factual manner okay so thank you so much for listening to our lecture today so i hope you learned something today thank you